welcome to Pearl and Plume, a knitting podcast. Um, I'm really trying to podcast every month, so here we go. March. It's at the end of March. It is Sunday. It is March. Oh boy. It's starting off really well. It's March 28th, I think. Um, yeah, it is. And it's a super rainy day here in Western Massachusetts. Um, but it's spring and that's expected. And I am wearing an FO. Um, but let me back up a little bit. Okay, so don't remember what episode this is. I'll put that in the title. Um, you can find me on Ravelry at Kiki Carlisle and on Instagram at Kiki Carlisle. I don't post a lot of details on Ravelry. I usually get my finished objects and um, often my works and projects up, up there, works in progress. But I post a lot of pictures of finished objects and whips on Instagram. So that's a good place to follow if you're interested in knitting. And it's mostly knitting for me, but there are some other things in there too. So yes, I have a finished object, a finished sweater, and I love it. I've spoken about this before on the podcast, so I will not go on and on. Um, it is the Once and Floral Sweater by Maxime Sear. Um, he's a Montreal-based knitwear designer who um, also has started spinning and has a fabulous podcast. And I can't remember. I think it's uh, I think it's called Cocktails with Les Garçons. They've just had a few episodes up. It's really fun to watch. And yeah, so this was a sweater that I saw and instantly fell in love with and just knew, put it in my queue. Didn't get to it for a while, but knew I was going to knit it. Um, and I think th the reason why is it has, first of all, a botanical motif. I love flowers, leaves, plants, anything on my sweaters I'm drawn to. And it also has a real vintage vibe, which I also like. Um, it actually reminded me of my grandmother, who was a really talented artist who did a lot of folk art, a lot of um, toll painting and theorem painting, and she was a quilter and a seamstress and a sewist and just an amazingly talented person who loved flowers. And so I saw this, thought of my grandmother, loved the vibe, and then found out that it was inspired by, um, by Schitt's Creek, David Rose on Schitt's Creek. So without further ado, I shall stand up and model this for you. Um, right, so you've got the beautiful uh, color work here. It has a folded collar, which I really like and was not hard at all to do. Um, I knit the size medium and let me sit down again. I I don't think I modified much at all. Like I I tend to ignore sleeve directions when I get to sleeves. I tend to if it's top down, I try it on and decide what I want my sleeves to be like according to how the body part of the sweater is fitting me. Um so sometimes that means I want a more fitted sleeve. And because this body was kind of a little more on the relaxed side, I decided to go with a bit of a more relaxed sleeve. I think I followed the, I think the direction said something like every inch or so you decrease after a certain amount of time. And um, I believe that's what I did. But what I tend to do is I make the first sleeve the way I want it and I very carefully add a stitch marker for every decrease and generally that means a decrease on either side of the beginning of the round which is very often the um, center of the armpit. So I put a stitch marker for every decrease and then when I knit the next sleeve I, um, I don't even usually count. I usually just match them up every once in a while and make sure that there's a decrease at about every marker that's on the first sleeve. Um, and then and then I did two by two cuffs, which I don't think were in the directions. I think this is a one by, 
No, that's two. That's a two by two rib. I guess I'm wrong. Um, I love how the collar fits. It's a little bit higher up on the neck here, and it's that that folded collar is just gives it such a nice structure. Um, I am starting to do uh, fancier cast-ons than than I originally did when I started knitting that are more flexible, more stretchy. Um, and that helps collars look more finished and 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 just better. But um, this fold over collar, I can see myself doing that again, even when it's not called for in a pattern. Um, the yarn I used was Cloud9 Fibers from that I purchased from Webs, and I don't believe it. I mean, there's probably still plenty at Webs Yarn Store, which you can get you can order from online. Um, but I don't know if it's being made anymore. I think it's a discontinued line. It was, they're having really great sales on that. So I purchased quite a bit of it. And it was, I think the heathered gray, and I can't remember the name, but I do think I mentioned it in my last podcast, is a sport weight. And the, this is really a very dark espresso brown. And it might be a fingering weight, but I could be getting that wrong. The roses are in a tweed that is a Valley Yarns tweed. Again, the details are in the last episode, so if you're really interested in that, check out the last episode. So yes, this is my once and floral sweater, and I love it. Um, yeah, it's great. I have a few other FOs. And first I will take a sip of my tea in my grandmother's mug. Okay. Um, I've been wearing my, all of my FOs quite a bit. And I don't own sock blockers, so this isn't going to be particularly beautiful, but these are the Lumi socks from Fiber Tails. As you can see, I have been wearing them. I wear them every day, even on warmer days. Like say it's 60 degrees outside. Well, it might be in the 50s. I've been wearing them quite frequently. So I will stand up and just give you a look. So it has an Estonian, I think it's called an Estonian, no, a Latvian braid. Sorry, not Estonian, Latvian braid um, at the top here. And on one of them, I believe I messed it up and I left it because I was kind of getting tired of knitting these and there's nothing wrong with the pattern. I was just kind of bored. So this is the correct one and you can see how it's got that nice V pattern. Um, this one I messed up on. There's no V. These are for me and I don't care. Um, there's a little braid here at the end. And I've thought of kind of um, actually sewing it in so it's just a loop so I can kind of hang them up. Just haven't done that yet. I also think they'd look cute with just a pom-pom or a tassel at the end. Um, this was a very quick and easy knit. And um, they are super cozy and I probably have worn them almost every day since I made them. There's something really magical about <laughs> lopey yarn. It's super warm but also so great for a really cold day, but somehow it tends to work when it's not super cold either. Maybe that's me. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I love them and the socks are great. So Lumi Socks by Fiber Tails. She also has a great podcast and lots of beautiful patterns. These are the only, this is the only uh, one of her patterns I have knit, but I can see myself definitely um, knitting more of her beautiful patterns. And her podcast is super cozy and wonderful and beautiful. So check that out. The next FO is a pair of mittens for myself. And these are just, it's a free pattern. The world's simplest mittens pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I just made them out of random scrappy yarns. I marled a lot of different yarns together. They're super fuzzy. They're kind of wonky. This one looks like it's twisted. And I had some fun with like random patterns when I made them. They, so they don't match, but they're super warm. And I just wanted something easy that I didn't have to think about. I had knit two pairs of mittens 
right before I made these that both went to my sisters and I still needed my own mittens because they were both supposed to be mine and my sisters liked them so I gave them away. And I still need a pair of my own really warm mittens so I actually think I like this one more. Wait, is it that one that I like more? Maybe it's this one. I don't know. I love the flea pattern here. But I ended up really liking the cuff and how that marled together. I don't know what yarns I used. I used leftover bits and bobs from projects. And I left these here so I can kind of hang them up easily if they get wet. Yeah. And there's definitely some alpaca and mohair in here. So they're super soft and warm. Tin can knits. They're just a great resource for really well-written patterns for the whole family, all sizes, all body types, all ages, all sizes. It's a really great resource. And they have a lot of free patterns that are really super easy to understand and really great if you're starting out. Um, so these socks are DK socks, DK weight socks that are just vanilla socks. I did take some notes. I think I cast on 48 stitches and did a two by two rib. Hold on, let me get this on right here. Did a two by two rib and um, I'll lean back and show you how they look on. I don't have sock blockers, so isn't that beautiful? Um, and again, I marled. I marled the yarn. Um, this is a striping yarn, a self-striping yarn from Nipix. It is called Cloudy with a ch Chance of Rainbows. I held it double with a Regia brown tweed sock yarn. Um, I tried to like make a couple stripes up here by replacing the brown sock yarn with another color of yarn. So on both of them, there are these brighter stripes at the top. They're hardly noticeable. <laughs> um, the heel flap I made using the Regia and a knit pinks, a knit picks stroll that I had dyed myself a, a pale pink. I did that with both. Then when I got to, this is the first one I knit, when I got to about here, I was worried that I wouldn't have enough to knit the other socks, so I um, I swapped out both yarns and just knit the rest hot pink, held double with the hot pink I dyed myself and also um, the golden color that it's held with, um, I also dyed, and they're both Knit Picks sock yarns. So I've worn these a lot too. They were a really dense, they were a really dense fabric. I probably could have gone up a needle size, but I am such a loose knitter that I have learned to always go down a needle size, especially with socks, because I want them to fit kind of snug. And um, so around here, my hand was getting tired. I used nine inch circulars, and I believe I used a size, maybe used a size two. I can look, I might still be in here. Are my needles still in here? No, they're not. Oh well. Yes, they are. What size? What size did I use? Size one. Size one. I used to size one with DK weight yarn, I'm pretty sure. Um, I do have notes on this, but anyway, the point is 48 stitches DK weight yarn. Pick your needle size that, that makes a gauge of fabric that you want, you know, but this is kind of just a vanilla sock. So that's my last FO, but I do have a bit of mending that I wanted to share. Again, I've worn these a lot, <laughs> so I needed to mend them. These are the um, Sunday Socks by Petite Knit that I talked about in my last episode. And I knit them with this lovely, super colorful, super happy making yarn that I got in a yarn, kind of a, 
I got it from Darcy. I ordered it from Darcy Does It. She makes these really amazing kits with beautiful project bags and other and other, other things maybe, and also yarn. And um, so it is not sock yarn. It doesn't have any nylon in it and it's not super washed, but I still wanted to make socks because I just love stripey, crazy socks with this yarn. And um, then yarn is by Naima Band. And I do talk about it in my last episode if you want more information about that. But because I wore them so many times and because I also knit them out of that rather loose gauge, which makes for a, a fabric that's more likely to to um, degrade, right? Because if your gauge is looser, then there's a lot more movement in the fiber. And um, okay, I'm back. I don't know what was going on with my camera, but I was talking about gauge in socks and how if you have a looser gauge, your sock, the fabric is going to degrade more quickly because there's just more movement between the fibers and they're more likely to snag on something and there's just a lot more friction can happen. There's a lot more surface area for the friction, right? So if it's a tighter gauge, it's just, it's more like it's going to stick together and be stronger. Um, and so the fact that I knit these with a yarn that was not sock yarn, so no nylon, and I did knit them in a rather loose gauge, and the fact that I've worn them not just in my house, but on walks <laughs> out and about in the world with my sneakers and my hiking boots, um, they've really gotten beaten up. So I knit a patch on there. And um, I am gonna have to put a link below to the instructions for the patch because it's probably fairly standard, but the directions I, I used were really great and I just can't remember where I got them from. But I will say that it involves using some double pointed needles and grabbing one leg of each stitch underneath, one leg of each stitch, you know, underneath as wide as you need it to be so you will end up covering the hole and then knitting back and forth um, until you get ab above the hole. So this is the bottom of one of the socks <laughs> and there's the patch and I chose to knit it in the same yarn and is it a little bumpy on the inside? Yeah, but it doesn't bother me and it's flattened out quite a bit quickly and it's not a perfect job, but I'm still proud of it because if you knit socks and you take the time to make something, it's just really, it's worth it. I mean, it's, I just, I'm going to be wearing these a lot. Um, and so now I need to do the same with the other sock because there's a hole there, just like in the first one, which makes me think of, um, so I have often, in fact, I did it in the heel. I used mohair to reinforce the heel. <clears throat> and I did use mohair to reinforce the toe when I originally knit these socks. But now I can see that this is where I'm wearing my socks out. And so I should either start knitting with mohair mid um, sole, or I could go back and reinforce with mohair just the bottom here. Because if you do start knitting mid sole with mohair, this whole bunch, this whole bit of your sock is gonna be quite a bit warmer. And that might be too warm. For certain parts of the year. I don't know. I like the idea of using sock, using yarns that don't have nylon in them and using mohair as like a strengthening um, strand um, because it's natural and sustainable. And so I'm going to be thinking about that more, um, how I can how I can uh, make that a part of my sock knitting practice without making socks that are way too hot. So whether it's duplicate stitch on the bottom, like how much would that reinforce it? I don't know. Something to think about um, as I knit more and more socks because this is one of my goals <laughs> this year is to knit socks. I don't want to buy socks for myself anymore. 
and I've, I'm, a lot of my socks are falling apart and I just, that's one of the reasons these have fallen apart so quickly is that I will wear them a few days in a row. Maybe because it's wool, maybe because I do wash every day or rinse off every day. Um, they don't smell. They get dirty and I need to wash them by hand. I wash these by hand, but they don't get stinky. Just, anyway, I, I really, you can tell, I just, I love this yarn and I love this sock and I'm excited about those. Okay, so those are all of my finished objects, but I have a bunch of whips to share and um, my monogamous knitting soul is show, showing itself because I have been ignoring some of my, my earring is stuck, my hair is stuck, my earring. I've been ignoring some of my um, whips. Case in point, here we go. Can't even find it. Okay, yeah, so um, with my sock knitting goals this year, I started, I wanted to knit the perfect, like fine, super fitted sock weight yarn sock. And um, here's where I am. And for me with my loose knitting, that means I am using a double zero needle with this sock yarn. And I am at the heel flap. And I got this far in the heel flap and I probably have, I'm probably two thirds of the way, maybe a little less been two thirds of the way and wish I had chosen a different heel method because these needles are tiny. The sock circumference feels really small because it's so, the ribbing is just it's so tight that it's not fun to knit. So is it a perfect sock for me if it's not bringing me joy to create, to make it? Probably not. Do I want to finish this? Yes. This yarn is from Lovecrafts and it is their paint box sock yarn. And it creates um, this really fun, I think it's called Fair Isle. It's not self striping, it's called Fair Isle because you've got stripes, but you also have some like patterning that shows up that is really quite pleasant. Um, the cuff and heel and toe flap are just um, are quite a bit softer than the Lovecraft's yarn, although I'm sure it's a sturdy sock. It is, it's a sock yarn and it has nylon in it. It's um, Cascade Yarns Heritage Superwash Merino Wool. And it's just, um, here's the label. And it's a, uh, it's a heathered gray, which is a good basic color to have around and you can really tell that this is not super soft but on my feet it's fine and it'll be sturdy um, the gray heritage sock yarn is a lot softer um, and I like how it kind of picks up on this purpley gray that's in the um, paint box yarn so I put this down and knit <laughs> I think I've knit two other pairs of socks after putting it down. It's not that much fun. Okay, and then another whip that it has been lying around because I'm waiting to hear about sizing from the, um, well, for my cousin. This is for her, her daughter. And I just need to hear, I just, I'm worried. They live in Pennsylvania. I've actually never met her daughter and I just don't want this to be too small. So it's this gorgeous rose heather knit picks yarn. As much as I'm not a fan of wearing and knitting with superwash yarn, I've just, I'm much more into more rustic yarns now. When I'm knitting for parents of young people, unless they're super into wool and want all natural things, I'm just gonna use superwash yarn so that it's easy for them. So I am knitting the baby yoke sweater the flower one. I've already knit the dog one for another cousin's um, child, and now I'm knitting this flower one. I started out knitting the sock arm sweater. That's why this looks familiar. And it was not working out for me. 
and I just think I need more practice picking up stitches around. I didn't love, so the sock arm sweater is super cute. Love the way it looks. I didn't think I did it justice. And I just, I don't have the mojo for knitting for other people that I have for knitting for myself. <laughs> when I see something that I love for myself, I am going to like, figure it out, how to make it look good, how to make it look like it should look. And this was just not happening for me. So it was a similar number of stitches and the soccer arm sweater is a bottom up sweater. This is a bottom up sweater. So I didn't have to take, I almost finished knitting that other sweater. I was maybe an inch away from the second sleeve when I was like, mm -mm. it takes time to get to that point for me. Um, and I just got to the point where I was like, no, I don't love this and I don't want to give this to anyone. So I took, I, I realized that I could just use what I had um, for the body to knit this other sweater. And so I have most of the sleeves done and I have the body done. Here's the other sleeve. It's kind of a mess in here. And um, I'm going to get the, start the yoke, but I might have to make the sleeves longer. So I'm waiting to hear from mom. I do that and I think the colors I'm going to use are are they all in here I think I'm going to use like a cream color for the yoke it's going to be very similar to the pattern picture um but I might use a teal for the flowers so that is waiting but it's I mean I could finish that in an afternoon a weekend afternoon probably okay the other whip I have is for that child's baby brother and this was the inspiration so my cousin had a second child and I um, I knit I knit baby babies sweaters babies who join my family I want to knit them sweaters and um, I wasn't knitting much when she had her first child so trying to catch up. So I am knitting Tin Can Knits again. Love their patterns. The flax sweater. And this is a little wrinkled, but if you haven't heard of the flax sweater and you want to get into knitting sweaters or you just want an easy sweater pattern that's free that has everyone's size, it's a, it's a go-to. This is my second one that I've made for a baby or child. So um, it's on small needles, so it's hard to see right now, but it has this garter strip down the sleeves, which is really sweet. And it's a very simple raglan style. This is the front. You can't tell because of the, uh, the needles are so small. But here it is. And I'm just knitting it in... I never knit in this color and I thought it was fun. Um, I'm just knitting it in a Cascade Yarn Superwash Merino in this really classic old school baby blue color. It's actually showing up more periwinkle on the screen right now. Trust me, it's like baby boy blue. Personally, I dressed my boys in purple and pink and every color of the rainbow. And I'm sure my cousin would too. I just, I just wanted to knit in this color because I never have. <laughs> and it's really soft and um, I'm sure Jackson will look really adorable in it. I might make him some booties when we're done or a hat. He's tiny. He was born at four pounds and he just came home after a month, about a month, I think, of being in the NICU. So he won't fit into this for a while. That's fine. It'll be great for air conditioning, right? Babies can wear sweaters all year long because if you go into a restaurant, who's going into restaurants? I don't know. If you're in a cold place, you just pop that sweater on that baby. I have made a tiny bit of progress on Amelia's sweater. Not much. But, you know, a little. I actually... I'm making it. I'm getting there. She had thought maybe it would be a crop. She might want a crop top, crop sweater. So, And this is stretchy yarn, so I don't want to overdo it. Um, so I just started the sleeve, and I figure I'll wait and have her try this on. See how long she wants it. It's ribbed, so it really looks very small, but it's super stretchy. 
And again, this is like a nitpicks episode. This is all, <laughs> this is swish worsted um, in the Dove Heather, which is a lovely, soft, um, heathered gray color. Teenagers in my house are gonna get super wash Aaron sweaters. I think. I am drinking hibiscus tea and it's delicious. Okay, my next, my next whip has quite a story because it's really, hold on a second, the third time kind of that I've knit it. It is the Birkin by Caitlin Hunter. And if you've thought of knitting this sweater, I don't blame you. It's exquisitely beautiful, as are all of her patterns. I saw it and it was one of the, it was like this sweater. It was like, well, I'm going to knit that. I have to have that. Um, it has that flower motif that I love. And, but what's interesting is it has this, de this yoke that has, now this is like the first one I knit. And as you can see, the green leaves are not showing up very well because there's no contrast. It has this amazingly long yoke with no increases in it. And so quite a few people have had a hard time. I mean, tons of people are knitting this sweater and having success, but some people are str struggled with, um, and I'm one of them, <laughs> with the depth of the width of the yoke when they were done. So when you are knitting color work, you often tend to, your knitting often tends to um, be a tighter gauge. And that, that tends to increase the more colors you are using. Um, if it's two color color work, my gauge doesn't change that much. But three color color work, cha it changes quite a bit. So, and that happens in this sweater where you're knitting three colors. Now this panel is not part of the pattern, so ignore that. Here's a better example of the, of the yoke. This isn't even a perfect example e either because my, this is missing some of the flowers. So here's the yoke with the absence of a couple small flower motifs. Um, so here's, I'm gonna back up and tell you the story. I knit this sweater. I tried it on. And despite the fact that I kept trying to convince myself that it would fit and kept tugging it down over my shoulders, it just was too tight at the shoulders. So my dear friend, Laura, who meanwhile was knitting this version, this color version, and she omitted some of the flowers, um, said, well, let's steak it. So I cut it. Well, actually, before she said that, I cut it and knit a um, button band on either side without buttons. It was going to be open front. That didn't work. So she said, well, let me knit a panel of the same flowers down the front. That might be pretty. And she did. Still didn't work. Okay. I modified. I made the ribbing longer here. It's a little bit cropped. I actually love it and wish my shoulders were narrower, but they're not. Don't know what I'm going to do with this. If you have ideas, let me know. I might turn it back into a cardigan. I don't know. I might make a sweater-shaped pillow. <laughs> so then my friend Laura fell in love with the design too and knit one. She knit this yoke and she did omit some of the smaller flowers in between. You can't really even, you'd have to search to figure it out. It's, she just made it a little more simple. And it was a tiny bit narrow for her. But it fit me better. It is still a tiny bit narrow for me, but I can get away with it. So I took, she gave me the yoke after knitting it and realizing it was too small for her. And she knitted again and made herself one that fit. She gave it to me. I added sleeves, three quarter length sleeves, a cropped kind of swingy body. And here we have my second Birkin. What I love about the color she chose is that they pop quite a bit more than the colors I chose, which I'm really, actually love these colors it's just you can tell that there's no contrast here if you take a photo of this with black and white you can't see that there's any green at all and you barely see the blue um 
so those are the first two Birkins. But I wasn't done because I wanted one that I could wear that was uncomplicated and that in colors that, I mean, I love the colors, the green and purple, but it's just, it didn't, it's not what I would have chosen. So I started this one and immediately felt like I didn't totally love my color choice. It's similar to the last one and the same pink and the same green, which don't have a lot of contrast. And um, let me just get it situated. Same pink, same green, very low contrast green, especially on the screen. Um, and then I used orange instead of the rust, the dark, dark, rusty red, and I'm using white. And honestly, I still have mixed feelings. The white has helped me like it a little bit more, the white flowers. It's kind of giving off a 70s vibe, which I don't know. Usually I'm pretty good about picking colors and I don't feel regrets this far into a project, into the color work portion anyway. It kind of looks like an Easter egg, but it also looks really springy. I wish the green stuck out more. I should have picked a darker green or a lighter green. So there you have it. Am I going to be knitting a fourth Birkin? Possibly. The, the thing is, I love color work sweaters. And so it doesn't even feel like a big deal for me to be not sure about this and then another one. Um, it fits better. I think this one's going to fit me. And if you even compare the size, I mean, if you compare the gauge, which is really easy to see when you compare the flowers, the size of the flowers, this one's much bigger. Um, so I do like the white flowers with the orange center. I think that's pretty cute. So anyway, there you have it. Um, the green and pink yarn are the same. The brown, while it looks just about the same, this is a cascade yarn and it's 100% wool. This brown that I'm using in this one is a Cloud9 yarn with a little bit of um, alpaca in it. So it has a soft fuzzy halo, which I'm a big fan of. So there you have it. This is what I have been ignoring everything to knit on. And it has been fun. I am going to pause because I have something else to share. And I am back for sharing time. Other sharing time. So a few years ago, I said to my husband, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to spin yarn because I just don't think I'll be into that. And he looked at me and said, you're going to spin yarn. And I said, yeah, I don't think so. Um, so, I mean, I'm not spinning yarn yet because this is a mess. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to later after I podcast and I'm going to get it because I watched a bunch more videos and something clicked. And I think the first time I was watching the videos, I wasn't totally paying attention and it might have something to do with drinking wine, but I mean, look at that, look at how messy that is. I mean, it's, it's, it's my first spun yarn. Um, okay. So this beautiful, beautiful top whirl spindle, this is the whirl, this is the shaft. Um, this spindle came from Fox Mountain Spindles. Um, here's another pick, uh, his card. Um, Nova Scotia. And it is a walnut and spalted. This might be the walnut. This is the spalted maple spindle. Um, it is a 1.7 ounce spindle which is kind of heavier up here and it has this ridge for balancing so it's heavier on the outside which are things that you want I think when you're first spinning what from what I've read you want a spindle that's between was it one and seven ounces or one and two ounces I think between one and two ounces not one and seven ounces I don't know why I said that I said that because this is 1.7 ounces um Maybe it's between two and three ounces, in which case this is a little bit light. I don't know.
but I am really excited. And like I said, I was watching more videos last night and some things clicked. So this was me trying to spin a few days ago, also while helping my son with his homework. <laughs> so <laughs> no wonder. Um, so I bought that and then I bought yarn from these both I found on Etsy. Raw Fiber Arts Company. And I got the Corydale Wool Top. From what I understand, so there's different kinds of fibers you can buy to spin and they come in different... They... They are all... They, whatever. There are lots of different kinds of fibers you can spin. And one of them is called top. And what I understand about top is that the fibers, it's like a, t a long tube and they all are facing the same direction. Um, yeah, I'm learning. So there's so many great resources online to learn about that. That's the Corydale, which I, I know I love Corydale. So, uh, and I heard that it was good to spin with. And then it, if, because I bought that, I was able to get eight ounces of Spinner's Delight. I don't know what that means. It might mean it's a mix. I could probably go to the website and find out what it, what it, what fibers it actually is. Um, and so that's what I spun the first time as the Spinner's Delight. I am going to dye some yarn before I spin it soon. I'm gonna keep practicing, I think, with the Spinner's Delight and then see. And this was such a, sh a mess that I'm wondering how much of it I can, I'm wondering if I can unravel it at all. Probably not, and that's okay. Um, I'll probably just take it off because it's not going to be worthy of doing much with. <laughs> so anyway, that is my latest thing. I'm going to be trying to spin some yarn. And then I'm going to dye some yarn and then I'll spin my dyed yarn and I want to ply it. So, um, I may have to get another, I don't know if this is wide enough to ply yarn on. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of other news. I did work in my bullet journal a little bit so if you're if you don't if you're not into anything other than the knitting content i guess you can go now i'll show you quickly my march bullet journaling well i'll show you one of the pages because i just um i'm figuring it out i figure after a few months i'll know what i want to do if i want to even keep doing it um but i'm having fun with the drawing part of it there's my march first page in march it's got just a full calendar there and then um, some gratitude and then this which was really fun to draw <laughs> and really what I'm tracking right now are household chores exercise and eating vegetables enough vegetables there's that I recently purchased some seeds I don't plant a ton I, I have gardens in my backyard and I grow a lot of flowers and a lot of perennials and herbs and we usually um, join a CSA for our vegetables in the summer, but sometimes I'll grow like a few veggies, like some cherry tomatoes and stuff that I'll just want, you know, a little bit of. Um, but mostly I grow, grow flowers and I do plant perennials every year and I usually plant the following, which I just got. I plant sunflowers, I plant calendula, that's from a friend of a friend. <laughs> Here are more sunflowers. Got some salad greens. I always plant zinnias. And nasturtiums are a really great, easy, easy growing plant. All of these are easy growing and that's why I plant them. Um, and then I don't usually plant morning glories because they need something to climb up and that's more work, but I'm gonna do that this year. And did I say poppies? Poppies. I often like to plant California poppies. They're gorgeous. This year I got these, they're called Amazing Gray. And um, they're like a pale lavendery gray color. Really gorgeous. Um, 
and I was going to show you the eggs that we are getting right now from our chickens and I will be right back to show you those. And last but not least, the ladies are laying. Susie Buzzy, our gorgeous, oh, this is really blowing out in the light. Let me turn this light down. Does it help? Susie Buzzy, our beautiful um, it's not really helping. She is our snowy Easter egger and she lays these pale blue eggs. And if I have something white next to it, maybe it would um, show you how light blue, how pale blue they are. But I can't seem to find a white piece of paper. Um, Kitty lays pinky peach eggs. June. June lays olive eggs. And the wildlings lay brown eggs. Isn't that gorgeous? Anyway, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And I'll talk to you later.